Hey there friends, I just did a video just a little bit ago about how to build a cold frame um, and so this video is about how I actually built mine. Um, what this is called is a pallet collar. It's basically pieces of wood with um, hinges and then they have these little legs on the bottom of the hinges that make it so the pallet collars hook together. So I'm building mine based around these pallet collars which I purchased fully made already um, but they could very easily be made just with hinges um, and wood and just make your own boxes and I will be using polycarbonate for the lid so this is going to be how I made mine and the um, advantage to using these types of structures would be that they fold up I mean look at this fold up and then you stick it in your shed so um, in the springtime when you're ready to use them you could pop them on there um, or in the fall when it's you know you know a frost is going to be coming and you wanted to protect your plants I would go ahead and just uh, set them up for that and so yeah that's why I like this portable design and I like the polycarbonate because it insulates well and it's long lasting so let's go ahead and get started all right here we are gonna build a green or not a greenhouse a cold frame yeah, a cold frames a mini greenhouse I suppose well anyway here's what it looks like before we built it uh, I got these things, they're called pallet collars. I got them for $5 each. Um, they weren't the prettiest looking things. They had, you know, different types of uh, business names all painted and printed on the sides and everything. That's why I went ahead and painted them white. Um, but I went ahead and made my garden beds out of them and then this top one is the cold frame part. Like, let me show you. This is what it looks like when it's just a garden bed. Just I don't paint all the way to the side. I don't know if you can see that. I make sure not to paint further than where the soil is going to go because I don't want, you know, the chemicals to leach into it. But then this palette collar gets set on top of it and it has these little hinges and these little feet that make it so that they connect together. Does that make sense? So that's why I really like these is because you can put them together. Uh, they're pretty sturdy and you can even stack them up like this one here. This one is stacked up three high, so if you had really tall plants, you could put your plants in one that's taller, or if you have plants that are a little on the shorter side, you can put them in a shorter one. And then for summer growing, you take it off, and then you just have your straight, you know, garden bed. So the first thing we're going to do, after I've put this pallet collar on here, is I'm going to take the wood that I have pre-cut and painted over here, and we're going to put it on the side here. Let me show you my notes. Maybe this will make more sense. So here is the cold frames, the 31 by 47, 47 and a half. And so I took an eight foot stick. Sorry if this is not gonna make sense to those of you that use the metric system, but the back of it is gonna be this 47. And then for the 31 side, I put it right here and I just cut it on the diagonal so that this side goes on the left side, that side goes on the right side. So that that's real efficient on space. And then this piece right here, which would be the cutoff, is actually going to be the piece that helps keep it open. So um, it makes it so it's real efficient on the wood. There's absolutely no waste or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and install those pieces of wood, and I'll show you what it looks like in a quick second here. Okay, I got it all put together. The uh, sides, I used two screws. I went ahead and pre-drilled and screwed them together, so this is kind of what it looks like. I put on the hinges on the back two screws on that side so now when it opens this is what the top lid kind of looks like and on the top here's where the uh, polycarbonate is going to sit the important things about this is I got a zinc plated um, hinge here so that it will be okay for an outdoor application and the screws on the side you're going to want to make sure you use exterior screws on those as well um, because if it's going to be outside like this it's definitely going to need to you know be able to handle the weather so the next step after I've built this, uh, you know, outside frame for this top lid is going to be to measure um, and cut a piece of wood that's actually going to go across here from these pieces, um, from one piece to the other. So let me go ahead and do that now and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I got the center support piece on. It's not all painted and pretty like the other pieces of wood are, but that's alright. Maybe I'll do that, you know, later on. But anyway, I went ahead and pre-drilled some holes on the sides from the side um, and I put two screws in to hold the piece of wood on with the same uh, exterior screws that I used before and so now it's ready for the insulation I'm gonna go ahead and cut the car shade I'll show you how I cut that so I can put it on the inside around here um, to help 
bridge those gaps in the pieces of wood and also to increase the, you know, the sun. So let me go, go ahead and show you how I cut that out. Okay, so here's the car shade all cut out. It's really simple and easy to do. I just cut it across from one side all the way to the other, and then the side with this little divot here, I cut it up. And basically, this back part is going to go across the back of the cold frame, and then this side's going to go on the left side, and this is going to go on the right side. So, um, yeah, there's a couple reasons I use this. One is because it's reflective, which is going to help the plants grow better. It's going to help reflect the light so that in low light conditions they can get the most light possible. Um, also, it's thick. It's got, you know, this, it's not real thick, but it's got some insulation to it so that it'll help keep the heat in. Um, and the reflectiveness will help keep reflecting the heat in as well. And it's going to cover those sections on the wood where uh, the wood might be drafty. So this fixes all of those problems all in one cheap dollar store car shade. So let's go put that together and we'll see what it looks like. All right, it's on. We are almost ready. That uh, sunshade is affixed. I used just some regular ordinary um, thumbtacks to adhere it to the wood there. Uh, I wanted it to be able to come off easily if I needed it to, so that's why I went ahead and did it with something that would be easily removed but also easy to put in. So, we're well, ready for the polycarbonate. Um, the last thing we're going to do is um, go ahead and pre-drill the holes for where the polycarbonate is going to go. I'm going to pre-drill some on the top there, probably like four, maybe another two on the sides, and then another two into the center support so that it's adhered on all sides. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill those, and then I'll show you how those go on. This is actually a really important step, so um, yeah, I'll, more on that in just a second. Hey there, friends. Last leg of the race here. So, polycarbonate. This is actually, I'm, you know, for this particular one, I mean, it differs when you're using glass and different things, but if you do use polycarbonate on yours, there are some things that are really important that you do with them. The first is to tape the edges. I don't know if you can see this, but the edges are taped with, like, this HVAC tape that metal kind of tape. Um, the reason I use this is because the channels are multi-walls and when there's multi-wall polycarbonate, water can get inside of those channels and dirt and pollen and all this other stuff and it can mold, it can mildew, you know, it can turn green and brown and pink and all these different things. All of those things are things we don't want when we're using our polycarbonate because we want it to stay clear and pretty for as long as possible. So that's number one. Make sure you tape the edges of your panels to kind of enclose where those channels are open. And the second part is to use the right screws. This is actually really important. Um, these screws have metal and rubber washers on them. There's metal um, on the back here, and then there's rubber on the top. This has um, several purposes. The first is, again, to keep the water out of the channels with the rubber. Um, and the second is because it adds a rigidity to it. It makes it more rigid um, with the metal. So when there's wind and there's snow and things like this, and it isn't just if you're working with polycarbonate for a um, cold frame. Even if you're working with polycarbonate for a greenhouse, this is actually really important. Um, it'll make it so that the wind and everything else will be able to, um, it, your structure will be able to withhandle those types of elements. And then the last thing, um, again, is with the rubber, it's because polycarbonate flexes. It um, will expand and contract through the different temperature cycles, and so it's really important to make sure that the rubber washer is there so that as it gets, you know, larger and smaller, it's not going to, um, basically crack the panel. So making sure we're using the right hardware is going to make it, you know, be nice and sturdy. It's going to make it waterproof. It's going to make sure nothing gets cracked. It'll be a long lasting structure. Again, whether you're using it for a cold frame or for a greenhouse, probably even more important for a greenhouse. Um, they're a little expensive, but you know, I really think they're worth it. And when you figure out how much it would be to take a regular screw and add a metal and a rubber washer to them, they're actually a pretty good deal. So they do come kind of crooked like this, and if you just go ahead and screw it in, it'll squash the polycarbonate down, and it won't stick to the back of the thing cor correctly. So when you are using it, you need to make sure that you just hold it in your fingers, kind of advance it a little bit so it sits flush with the bottom, and then you're ready to go. You can stick it right on. Just to the point where it touches the polycarbonate, and it's nice and tight, but it's not denting it. That's really important. So there you go.
A completed cold frame with nice polycarbonate top and the sides that are easily removable for um, when the temperature warms up or easy to put on for when the temperatures start to drop. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I appreciate your feedback and your comments and any questions that you have and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.